I got involved in 2006. It was a one-time deal. I went down with my older son because, quite frankly, he had never seen the other side of the world in terms of uh, poverty and, and, and need. And somehow, it's now 14 trips later. I'm an administrator down there. My older boy's been down there six, seven times, a couple of them without me. Um, thank you. And my younger boy came down once with me. He enjoyed it, but it wasn't his shtick, so, you know, that's okay. Um, we are, the, as I said, the longest running uh, clinic of its type in Rotary. It was founded by Dr. Tom Pruitt, an optometrist, about 30 years ago in the early 80s. We have been in a fixed base facility since the late 90s. We had it renovated approximately about three years ago. We have three surgical suites, we have a, a dental room, we have um, a sterilization room, we've got uh, optical shop, and we probably have the second best clinic in the state of Chihuahua, and we handle 60% of the indigent care in the state. We also handle patients from uh, other parts of Mexico that they bus in as far as, as, as uh, 12 hours away. I'm going to go through a uh, PowerPoint and this was put together a few weeks ago for my club that's got a little bit more knowledge of, uh, of the program so I may go through a few of these slides quicker than, than others. But what you see here is the road to uh, Guerrero. We fly to Chihuahua City which uh, for those of you who may not be aware of where that was and quite frankly when I went down there the first time I had no clue as to where I was going or what I was getting into. But if you drop down from El Paso and you go west from McAllen, that's about where Chihuahua City is. And then you go 120 miles west into um, Apple Orchard Country up in the hills where it's 7,000 feet. And I will tell you, one of the highlights when I get there, the first night that I get there, I go look at the stars. And we in Dallas, forgot what it looks like to see stars or have never seen them like this. Uh, it is just spectacular. Um, so let me see if I can make this work. How did I get involved? Fellow Rotary member uh, knew somebody that was looking for a program and we got there. My journey began in 2006. That's my older son Josh. We got on a plane and quite frankly we had no clue as to where we were going and someday over beverages I can tell you the travel uh, story to get down there was one that I will not repeat if I want you to come to the clinic. <laughs> but that being said, we got back and it was a fabulous experience and it was probably the best thing that I ever did with my son um, so far. We have different roles. My older son in the upper left in, in the uh, scrubs, he found his home in pre-op. He started as a volunteer there when he, last time he was down there, he ran pre-op. My younger boy, who is now 21, is in the second frame. He found his home in the optical shop, <coughs> uh, measuring for people's glasses and fitting them. So really, what is Guerrero Clinic? We're a medical facility that provides eye care, dental care, and also plastic surgery to the indigent population of the state of Chihuahua. Each clinic is three days long. We'll see between 800 and 1,000 eye patients at the clinic. We'll do approximately 200 to 250 cataract surgeries. We'll throw in a handful of pterygiums. We'll do, depending on how many dentists we have, we'll see anywhere from 50 to 250 dental patients. And these are not routine visits like we have here. The, many of these people have never been to a dentist before, so they do everything from cleaning to extractions to other things. So what is Guerrero? It's the longest running project of its type in Rotary. And as I mentioned, Dr. Pruitt started in the early 1980s. We provide 60% of the indigent care in the state of Chihuahua. We, have, we serve three populations. We serve Mexicans, we serve Mennonites, and the Tahamara Indians. But what is the clinic? It's really about people meeting people and people helping people. It's really that simple. I've been going down there for seven years now. And one thing that I never knew 
what do the patients do? Where do they stay? Because they come in, and if they're having surgery, they're here for a couple nights, but there's no Hiltons, there's no Hyatt's, no Marriott's. These people have nothing. They travel, and they stay in basically community rooms where what you're looking at there on the left, I think is a dance recital hall in the, in the town of Guerrero, which is about 10,000 people. Think of it as a John Wayne movie with the square and the church. Uh, sometimes you even see people on horses going down the street. We do cataracts. What is a cataract? Well, these are a great example of cataracts. Uh, if you look in the top pictures, the cataracts are on the, uh, the right eye of the left picture and the left eye of the right picture. They're not like cataracts that you find in the States. These are very dense and they're milky and most of the people just can't see. They, they, they're not that old. We see, we've done cataract surgery on, on kids as young as seven and elderly people and people who look elderly who aren't. It's, they, they live a tough life down there and they're outside, they're in a high, uh, high with the ultraviolets, they don't have eye protection. So quite frankly, the impact is that they're looking and they can see light maybe, but they can't see what's behind the curtain. This is where the clinic is. So El Paso is to the north and McAllen is to the right. So Chihuahua, we fly into Chihuahua City and where the big blue star is, you see the clinic itself. And it's not on a north-south route. And what that means is it's not on a high, highly drug traffic route like you have uh, on the west coast in, in, in Baja or even by, by McAllen. We're halfway between Chihuahua and the, and the Copper Canyon. So these are some images of Guerrero. We have the apple orchards, so we have the um, uh, irrigation ditch with the, the horse in the back there, and we have a couple pictures from the town square. So is it safe? Quite honestly, I think so. I've been doing it since 2006. My both sons have been, friends uh, uh, have come down, um, sons of Rotarians have come down. I don't know if any of you know uh, Keith Einstein, but that's his son Noah in the bottom right and left. Keith uh, has told me he believes that his experience there was uh, material in, in having him get into medical school. Uh, you had Sam Zaro speak a couple of weeks ago. That's his daughter, the second picture in um, and the third picture in. She's actually been to both the cataract clinic uh, and the eye clinic and the plastic surgery clinics. Mike Marath, a former uh, uh, president of my club, is on the far right. He came down, and there'll be more about him later, and Bruce Meek, our outgoing president, and his wife Sherry, just came down this spring. So um, I'm not a masochist, I'm not a sadist, and I like to be safe, and yes, you know, you can be in the wrong place at the wrong time, but that can happen here as well as there. So the clinic is a place to meet people. So what you see in the top left is a group of students from the University of Houston and the University of St. Louis. Um, University of St. Louis are optomet optometry uh, students, and the same on the right. So we have relationship with different schools that we bring the students down and quite frankly they see things at our clinic that they only read about. You just don't see them in. Uh, so it's a place to meet. Um, that's me with a young lady named Laura. She came down as an optometry student in 2006, 2007. And there she is again and you know so she came down a second time and said okay well what's next? <coughs> She was looking for a knight in shining armor, but she found Mike, and they ended up getting married. So we claim a couple of weddings, uh, I think three or four weddings over the years. The clinic's run by the Guerrero Rotary Foundation. It's got officers and, and members from both the United States and uh, in Mexico. The president of the foundation is uh, past district governor of Mexico in uh, out of Torreon by the name of Celso Reyes. We've got a vice president who um, 
uh, is out of Lake Jackson by the name of Walter Branson, and um, Pepe is, uh, lives in uh, El Paso and works in Juarez. So we have rotary clubs of various rotary clubs in Mexico, the Houston district, uh, and hopefully uh, more in the Dallas district uh, that will be involved. Now we have fun, we really do, and we are a family. We have marital disagreements, and that's Walter with his wife Elsa. We have heated debates about policies and, and, and other things. We question our leadership. And sometimes we're just plain silly. And sometimes we do back-breaking work. Sometimes we just hang around. We bridge cultures. And sometimes we just don't have time to walk. We've got to get there too quickly. And sometimes after a hard day's work on the john, you just need to sit down and read a book. However, when it's all said and done, we, we are one big happy family. Uh, I've got friends now in different countries. I've got friends I can't even talk to, but it's amazing. Um, it's, you know, great. So. We come down all very excited. If you look in the top left-hand corner, everybody's enthusiastic, and we work hard. The after picture on the way back shows a little bit different picture. Our sterilization room, our patients, we have Mennonite volunteers. Very interesting thing. The fellow in the lower left-hand corner with the mouth, uh, his mouth open uh, in the white hat, the shorter fellow, he's an elder of the Mennonites. His story of how he got to volunteer is very interesting. So he had come back from Toronto, where there's a, a huge group of Mennonites, and he had heard that there was this plastic surgery clinic that took place there, and his new grandbaby had a cleft palate. And so he brought the baby down and, and didn't know what to expect and got there. And it's very interesting. The, the Mexicans and the Mennonites don't have the, the best working relationships. There's a little bit of a distrust between them. And the gatekeepers at the clinic for the, for the plastics were, were Mexican. And he wasn't able to get the baby seen. So he was walking away. And one of the nurses was out for a smoke break and noticed him and went up and said, everything okay? And explained to her what was going on and what transpired and she said give me the baby and she took the baby she walked past uh, the gatekeepers and they took care of uh, the, his grandbaby fast forward to the next clinic which was an eye clinic Walter tends to be there very early in the morning to get things started and he was there and this gentleman walks in with some eggs and cheese and other things and they start talking and Walter had no clue as to anything that took place and basically he found out the story and, and, and uh, the Mennonites have been volunteering at the clinic ever since and um, they've been very supportive. These are our surgical rooms. We actually, the middle picture on top, we actually cut our own lenses for our glasses which we dispense in the bottom right in our optical shop. In the bottom left, you see uh, Elsa leading the patients in pre-op uh, to help take their mind off of what's about to happen to them. So what's the state of the clinic? Right now, we're operating on some reserves. The Mexican government canceled its reimbursement program for cataract surgeries. So we're back asking Rotarians for, for, for donations. Um, the program that the Mexican government canceled only took effect about two years ago. Prior to that, we lived on donations from Rotarians and other places. We got some reimbursements from local governments, but it was a lot of, a lot of hands to mouth. The, the government program really put us on some solid footing for, for about, a, about a year. Uh, we currently have two full-time paid employees, both in Mexico, a local administrator named Luis and his administra administrative assistant and bookkeeper. And we've been fortunate because of uh, some renovations and a new 5,000 square foot dining meeting hall that was donated by the Sweeney Rotary Club in, in the Houston District. Our, our physical facilities require more funds to operate and, and a little bit more maintenance. 
So it's the good and the bad. So if we're looking for what clubs can do, sponsor patients. Our patients receive care at no charge. Um, provide funds for operations. Our operating costs, excluding clinics, are about $36,000 a year for the staff, the maintenance, and, and, <coughs> and all the other operations that aren't directly related to the clinics. Um, apply for new or piggyback on district grants. Come down and volunteer. We'd love to, uh, to, to have any, in, any of you that are, are mind, like-minded to do that. Um, it's, we had, at my program a couple weeks ago, there were three of us that talked who had been there after the meeting, and we said, it's just, you can't explain it until you finally go down there. And so I'm inviting you all to come down. We have a wish list of equipment, um, opt optometric microscopes uh, for $15,000. We've got dental instruments we, we need at $3,000. Uh, we have, if you have an amount, we have good use for, for it, to be, to be quite honest. So come join us. What you're looking at on the left is um, after work, we're, we, the motel is, sits right on the edge of the apple orchard. And you hear stories about, uh, I know you've been to Nicaragua and... Oh, we, oh, we go down to our clinic across the water in Rio Bravo, Tamalipas. Oh, okay. Well, I hear stories of people who go down to clinics and they're in mosquito nettings and they're in the middle of the woods and the conditions are really tough. Quite frankly, we don't have that. We have a nice motel. Beds are a little bit hard, but it's clean um, and, it's, and it's comfortable. We're about a mile, maybe a mile and a half from the clinic where we have vans that transport um, people back and forth. We go into town sometimes for dinner, but it's pretty much self-contained. Um, and you get fresh cookies served warm. We have uh, two primary eye dental clinics a year in the spring and in the fall. Those are our big clinics. Okay. We also tend to have a smaller, I consider more of a family-based clinic um, in June, July. A matter of fact, that will go down uh, next week. I think on Tuesday or Wednesday they leave. And that one, there's only a group of about 19, 20 people going down there. Um, our plastic surgery clinic takes place somewhere in the third or the, four, uh, the four, eh, fourth quarter or the first quarter. And that's sort of, that, the plastics is, is handled a little bit separate than the eye and the dental. There, there's a Dr. Um, Yarish from Houston who basically brings his team down and they, they take over for that. The eye and, and the dental, it's much more of a mix and match and melt where people from all over the country, we've even had people from, from England come and, and, and volunteer. Uh, we had a few challenges a few years ago. When I first started going down, we had 50, 55 people every time. And then the drug violence flared up and the, uh, the media coverage of it flared up even higher. And you could really tell and, and the other thing was the, the airlines, the, the cost to fly down there increased. So in terms of the violence, when I first went down there in the Chihuahua airport, you'd see a soldier there with a rifle on his back, not paying much attention. And a year or two later, there were six, seven, eight, nine of them, and they were paying attention. And the last year, we're back down to the one or two people who, actually this last trip, I saw one soldier without a rifle. I'm not sure if he was traveling or if he was actually in there. So at least where we are, and we're not on the West Coast and we're not down uh, on the McAllen-Brownsville yeah, border, right having done this for 30 years yeah. there, I figured that we've, since the turn of the century, we've helped 20,000 um, Mexicans at no charge. And so we have, and we don't deal we don't deal in law enforcement. We don't deal in drugs. 
quite frankly, nobody wants to bother you unless you happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. You're more remote from where most of the cocktails are. Right. We're not on the north, uh, north south yeah. road. So, so what does it cost for a person to go down there for, say, you go for a week? We do, good question. We go down, we leave on uh, Tuesday afternoon, and American has a direct flight to uh, Chihuahua City, so we'll get there, um, we'll, we'll get to, we'll leave about 12, 1 o'clock, and we'll get there about 12, 1 o'clock. <coughs> then we have a drive, it's about two and a half, um, it's about two and a half hours to the clinic where we'll generally have lunch on the way. So we get to the clinic with the time change about 4 o'clock. We'll do an orientation. Uh, we'll do a tour. And then we may see a few patients to get the, pipe, um, the pipeline prepped for surgery first thing in the morning, have dinner, and, and, and go watch the stars and maybe have a beverage or two. So the cost itself is about $275 plus whatever your airfare is. Um, if you have mileage on American, that helps. If you don't, I just blew it on Australia. <laughs> then you can build it up again for the for the next one. The, uh, I believe it was from Dallas the last trip. It was about nine nine hundred dollars, mm -hmm. uh, and that was all. Maybe been a little bit more, but that but that was basically your lodging, your transportation, uh, uh, your transportation down in Mexico, your food. Um, you could go down there and people go down there with uh, 20 bucks in their pocket and they come back with 20 bucks in their pocket. Uh, other people will spend, a, there's not much to spend on other than if we stay in Chihuahua on Saturday night, dinner. So you may have a lunch to pick up, but 90% of the meals are, are covered as part of the cost. Yeah. Most of the time we, we try and fly out on Saturday afternoon. Okay. The, um, it depends on what Americans doing. Un yeah. United, um, United doesn't have the afternoon flight. American has an early morning flight and the afternoon flight. So if we can't logistically make the Saturday afternoon flight, we stay in Chihuahua City, kick back uh, Saturday night, and catch the early flight Sunday morning.